What's up YouTube? This is Zach Schneff and today I'm going to continue my series on advanced post-processing workflow. In the last episode, we were removing man-made structures from the pixel layer here using different cloning techniques. In this episode, we're going to start using adjustment layers to increase contrast and make any color modifications we want to uh, in a very targeted way using the luminosity selection tools available in the TK action panels. I'm not going to go into the same level of detail I do on my more extensive tutorials on my website. Uh, if you want to learn more about all the different techniques and tools that I'm using in this video, uh, check out the Tonality Control 2.0 video that's available on my website. So let's jump right into it and start with some adjustment layers. At this point of the workflow, I usually like to start with a couple of levels adjustment layers uh, just to start making some contrast adjustments, just like the big contrast adjustments. And I'll show you how I, how I use the TK Action Panel and Luminosity selections to help control those different contrast adjustments. So I'm going to jump right in. Uh, right up here in the T TK Action Panel, you can just hit the Levels Adjustment Layer. It'll build you. Uh, a levels adjustment layer. You can also do that down here in the black and white circle icon in the layers palette. You can just choose levels or curves, whichever one you prefer. I prefer levels just because it's kind of quick and dirty and again I can control it later with adjustment layers so this just gives me some some quick kind of rough draft broad strokes to start with. So with our levels adjustment layer started here oh, let me pull this down a little bit so I can get to it a uh, nice thing about Photoshop in general, all of this is customizable and so you can adjust your palettes accordingly. So I'm going to start with brightening the image. I'm going to grab the highlight slider here. I'm going to pull it to the left. And you can see I have the histogram open already just to help me monitor uh, the tonality of the image while we're making these adjustments. So as you can see, I've gone a little bit too far, and we'll come back and control these blown out highlights later. But this is just a good starting point, again, just kind of rough draft mode. And before I even start controlling this one, I'm going to create another one. So I'm just going to hit uh, the, the levels adjustment layer here on the panel again to load up another one. And this time I'm going to grab the mid-tone slider and pull it to the right to increase the contrast between the highlights and the midtones. And I'm pulling it down pretty far. Again, I'm going a little bit kind of too far. You can see these hills are getting pretty dark and losing some detail in those shadows. And, and that's okay. This is all just, again, kind of rough draft mode. And you can turn these off to kind of see the, the effect that each one's having so far. And it looks pretty good. This is, again, just a good starting point for doing some, some rough adjustments. So now I'm going to go in with some luminosity selections to help control these two uh, adjustment layers that I've added. As you can see, if I toggle this on and off, I want to start down here on this first uh, levels adjustment layer that was increasing the brightness. And what I want to do is I want to target those lightest tones that are being blown out here and help recover them uh, with a luminosity selection. So that's the beauty of these luminosity selections. You can target specific tonalities. So I'm going to hit lights 2 and you can see it gives us a preview of what the uh, selection will look like and that's perfect. That's, that's what I want it to look like. So with this selected in the channels panel here. I'm going to load the selection and then I'm going to hit this X up here just to remove any uh, rapid masks or, or uh, alpha layers that I've created. And again I find these marching ants pretty distracting. I usually hide them and you can find out what your keyboard shortcuts are. Uh, for me it's just Command H. Uh, but you can set it up differently, so just go into the view menu and see what your hide extras uh, keyboard shortcut is set to. 
So again, I can just toggle those on and off. Uh, so I do have a selection active here. And so let me click on the mask here in the Levels Adjustment Layer. I'm going to load up the Brush Tool. And at 50% with black as my foreground color, I'm going to go up and make a pass. Yeah, zoom out just a little bit. And I'm going to make a pass to recover some of these highlight tones. And actually, I'm going to come down into the transition area, transition zone as well. And I'm going to go in again. I'm going to change my opacity to 30%. And I'm going to make another pass to recover those tones a little bit more. And then I'm going to deselect the selection. And with an even lower opacity, so 25%, I'm just going to freehand blend a little bit as well. So that looks good. Uh, I've recovered a lot of those tones. And if I wanted to darken up this cloud a little bit more, I could. I would just go back over this area maybe one or two more times. So I'll go over one more time and into the transition zone here. Yeah, it looks good. So if I option click on the mask, you can see this is what the mask looks like because we were using luminosity selections to help us uh, contain where we were masking or control and select just those tonalities that we wanted affected. So that looks good. So now I'm going to click on to the mask on our uh, other levels adjustment layer that was uh, darkening the image. And let's control some of these shadows with a selection, uh, with a luminosity selection. So first things first, I'm going to start with a 3 on the dark side of the luminosity selection panel here. And that's looking pretty good. You can see that the shadow tones are, are being isolated pretty well. Uh, let me load a 4 and see what that looks like. Yeah, I actually think the 3 uh, was better. So let's go back to a 3. Yep, that looks good. This is what I'm looking for. And I could refine this further if I wanted to. I think this is close enough to what I'm looking for, uh, though. So I'm going to go with this. I'll hit the Selection button here on the panel and hit the X to clear all those uh, alpha layers that were built there. And again, I'm going to hide the marching ants. I'm going to load my brush tool. And let's make a couple passes here. Uh, I'm going to load my opacity 50%. And let's make a pass. And just recover some of these shadow tones. And then I'll go to 30% and maybe recover some of these, not too much. And then I'll do one more light pass at 30% down here. That looks good. And let me deselect. And then let's, again, if I option click on this mask, I just want to take a look. You can see uh, we targeted those shadow tones and then we masked them out to bring back uh, the detail in those shadows. So now we're looking good again. Uh, if I look at my histogram, all tones are, are good. There's no blown out highlights. There's no blocked up black tones. So we've got detail in shadows and highlights still. So that's, that's good. So I'm going to continue. Now that I've done my first two levels adjustment layers, then I start going further and start targeting the, the areas that I want to emphasize or accentuate. So I'm going to load another levels adjustment layer. And let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, let me just go to fit to screen. And I'm going to increase the contrast uh, in the hills and in the trees here. And again, I'm going to control it uh, and, and mask it out of any areas where I feel like it's going too far. So, and again, I think it's important not to be afraid to experiment and to go too far. And that's the beauty of having these tools is that you can always recover the tones uh, if you do go a little bit too far. So let's increase the contrast. I'll grab the, 
highlight slider to bring up those highlights. And I'll pull down those midtones. You could pull the shadow slider as well. I just find that the shadows get blocked up so quickly. Uh, so I tend to try to use the midtone slider to compress those tones together and increase contrast first. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to go even further with those midtone shadows. And let me just kind of preview on and off. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. We're, we're doing a good job of increasing the contrast in here. And there's other ways of doing this, and I'll show you that next. But this is a good, um, a good step in the right direction here as well. So let me preview that on and off again, just kind of get a good idea of the effect that it's having. Looks pretty good. I pretty much like it in the whole image, except, uh, again, up in these highlight tones, in the brightest uh, tones up in the clouds, and down here in the darkest shadows. So let's load up a couple more luminosity selections and help uh, bring back some of this detail in the highlights and the shadows. So we'll start with the highlights again. Uh, I'll load a lights 2 and we'll hit selection and then I'll hit the little X here to remove all those alpha layers again. Hide the marching ants, load the brush tool, click on the mask and let's make a pass. I'm going to zoom out of it just so I have a little bit of room to work outside of here on the canvas and we'll start with 50% opacity again and try to bring back those highlight tones. It's looking pretty good. Let's make another pass. And again, I'm going to deselect and come in at a lower opacity, maybe 30% again, and, and then just mask over this, or freehand blend over this area again. To help keep those tonal relationships uh, kind of right where I want them and in balance. So now let's load up uh, a darks 3 again. That looks good. Let's hit selection, hit the X to clear out those alpha channels. And I'll just make a pass at 30%. I don't mind having some, some shadows here. Actually, I think the shadows help the image, but I just want to control them a little bit. They're getting a little bit too strong. So I'll make a little pass here, a little pass here. Uh, maybe I'll go a little bit further. So maybe I'll go 50%. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll go back and, well, once I've added some more of these adjustment layers, you can always go back and re-edit any of these at any time. That's the beauty of adjustment layers and having a mask already attached to them. So let me go back in at a lower opacity and I'm going to work on this adjustment layer where I added the added to the darks. That looks good. So let me click these on and off and see how we're doing. Looks pretty good. Okay. I do feel like the highlights are being affected a little bit too much. So, deselect the selection I have active. And let me load up maybe a lights, I'll load up a lights one. Uh, let me see lights two. Actually, lights two just isolates it a little bit better. I'm going to do that one more time. Uh, so, we'll load this as a selection, clear out those alpha channels, hide the marching ants. Yeah, and let's just control these a little bit more. I'm going to go back in at 50%, do another pass. Okay, looks good. So I'll deselect. And let's just have a look at where we are so far. So if you option click on the eyeball on the bottom, 
uh, you can turn off all the other layers except for that. And you can toggle this on and off. You can see, okay, yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm definitely moving in the right direction here. It's looking pretty good. So let's zoom in a little bit more and see how we're doing here. There's 100%. looks pretty good. Uh, I definitely want to increase the contrast even further. And I just noticed a dust spot that I missed in uh, the previous episodes here. It's right here. So I'm just going to load up the spot healing brush here and just going to quickly remove that. All right, good deal. Let's zoom back out. And let's continue with more adjustment layers. I want to increase the contrast even further. I want to keep going until I feel like this area is, uh, is where I want it to be. I definitely think that there's more accentuation that can be done. So I'm going to do, let's do a mid-tone contrast, or I mean, uh, yeah, mid-tone uh, luminosity selection here. So let me click on the mid-tone, the first one. I don't think that's all that useful. Let me see the second one. That looks pretty good. Let me check the third one. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad either. I think this is the one I want to use, though. So I'm targeting the mid-tones uh, with this luminosity selection here. That's what these little buttons on the panel are. And let me load that as a selection. And so instead of uh, doing our adjustment first and then controlling it later, I'm actually going to load this selection straight into an adjustment uh, layer mask. Uh, so I have the selection active, and I'll just hit that Levels Adjustment layer. And if I option click on this mask, you can see that it just loaded that selection right into the mask. And this is uh, really useful for making a targeted tonality adjustment based on, on this uh, luminosity selection, the midtone selection. So let's make some adjustments to the midtones here. Let's... Uh, Pull down the mid-tone slider a little bit. Looks pretty good. Maybe even some shadow. Oops, the shadow slider a little bit as well. And also pull up those highlights. And let's kind of preview that on and off. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. I like that. And again, we'll have to control it uh, up here. But I don't mind this getting a little bit brighter, and overall, it, it definitely is uh, looking good over most of the image here. Yep, I like that. I might come back and control some of these tones again later, uh, but for now, I think that looks good. Yeah, some of these shadows are getting a little bit dark. So, let me look at the histogram. It's still pretty good. The histogram's still looking pretty good. You can see we've got no blown out highlights, even though these tones are bright. Uh, there's still information in there. And same with these shadows, even though they look dark, uh, there is still information here. Uh, it definitely shows up a little bit darker on YouTube, I notice, so keep that in mind. But I'm going to control these shadows a little bit more, bring a little bit more of that detail out. So I'm going to make sure there's no selections active. Let me clear out any alpha layers that I had before. And let me load up a Darks 3 again. That looks pretty good. And let me load that as a selection. Get rid of my alpha layers. Hide the marching ants. And let's jump back in and uh, bring back some of that shadow detail. So, yep, yeah, with... Uh, I'll try 30% and bring back some of that shadow detail. I don't want to go too far. I definitely want there to be shadows down here. I want the eye to kind of progress through these dark shadows into the frame and kind of that natural vignetting that those shadows create kind of pulls your eye in, but I still want there to be some detail here. So I'll do another 
pass here. And I'm going to go over this area a little bit more too. Okay, that looks good. I like where the tonality is headed here. It looks good. And let me zoom in on the tree. Eventually, uh, I think I will control some of these tones in the tree. They'll end up being a little bit too bright, but for now, they're still pretty good. So that looks good. Let's do another adjustment layer. Uh, this is pretty common. I'll end up with 5 to 10 uh, levels adjustment layers on a pretty regular basis. So I like to continue to just target individual areas and kind of uh, make those tonality changes that I think help individual areas of the image. So let's load up another one. Whoops, you can see this is a common mistake and even I still make it. I still had a selection active and so it got loaded right into that uh, adjustment layer mask. So I'm going to go back in the history and this time let's deselect the selection that was active and let's try that again. So let's load a levels adjustment layer and I'll actually put it on top. Just keep it in order. And I want to increase the, the brightness. So I'm going to grab that highlight slider. I'm going to pull it to the left. Again, it looks pretty good. And I'll grab the midtone slider, pull it to the right. And again, I'm just increasing the contrast of the image. And I'm mainly looking in this central area of the image. So let me turn that on and off or toggle the visibility. Yeah, that, I like that. I really want to bring, bring out more of the contrast in that central tree to really place emphasis on, on that. That is like the central subject of the image. And all these hills and, and other elements are really kind of supportive elements of this image. So I definitely want to accentuate that tree and, and give that kind of the, the visual weight that it uh, deserves. So kind of preview that on and off. Uh, that looks really good. Again, I think it just needs to be controlled a little bit. So let me um, recover some of these highlight tones that are, are blowing out up here. And again, recover some of those shadows that are going too far and where we're losing some information down here. So let me reset this. And you can see from the histogram here, uh, without any changes made, we're definitely having some highlight clipping. We're losing some information in those lightest tones. It says we're still good in the shadows, but I still want to lighten those up a little bit. So let's do another lights too. And we'll load that as a selection and clear out the alpha layers, hide the marching ants. You can definitely see a, a theme here. So with the brush tool active again, uh, I think I'm going to start with 50%. Yep, and let's head up to this sky area and let's just recover some of these highlight tones. So I'll make a couple of passes, especially in this brightest area here. And we'll kind of bring those tones back. And while I'm at it, since I'm making several passes here, uh, I'm going to look for other layers, adjustment layers, where those highlights might be being affected more than I want. Yep, so we'll go back to this one again, make another pass. And I'll even dip down into the transition zone here again. Again, to keep that transition zone uh, looking as natural as possible. And then I'll do one more pass up high, and then right in the middle. And then maybe one more pass in the transition zone as well. Like that's getting a little bit bright. Okay, that looks pretty good. And if I deselect and then reset my histogram, you can see that the highlight tones are no longer clipping and so that we've we've got information back in those highlight tones. 
So let's do a quick update and kind of see where we're at. Let's option click the, the base layer here, or the pixel layer. And you can see this is where we've come so far. You can see just how powerful these targeted tonality adjustments are. Uh, you know, it was a fairly bland image after we blended all those tonalities together with the multiple exposures. But you can see just the level of control that you can have uh, with these tools is pretty incredible. So let me do one more. Let me see, let me deselect, make sure there's nothing active. And I'm going to go over those shadow tones again. So let's load up uh, a darks 3. Let's see what a darks 4 looks like now. That looks pretty good as well. I think a darks 3 is still fine though. So let's load that as a selection, get rid of those alpha layers, and let's look at the the different the different layers, different adjustment layers, and how they're affecting those shadow tones. Yeah, I'm just gonna bring them back a little bit. I like the shadow tones again, but I just want to control them a little bit, keep that information kind of right where I want it. So with 50%. Let's make a pass here in the shadows, really just in those darkest tones. I'm not even gonna worry about this hill over here. I'm just gonna make a couple passes here until I feel like these tones are, are back in line. Uh, and that looks good. I, li I like where that's at right now. So let's deselect again. This is a good habit to get into whenever you're done making these changes and you're using selections. I just hit Command D on a Mac I think it's Control D on a PC. Uh, before I move on to another step, I just deselect, and then you can move on and know you don't have a selection active. Because I still forget, even even though it's a habit and I've built it into a habit, I still manage to forget. So let's do another mid-tone adjustment again. So let's load, let's see a, a mid-tone 2 again, see what that looks like. And let me look at a mid-tone 1. That looks pretty good. Actually, I'm going to load a mid-tone 1 this time. And believe it or not, there is a selection active. Uh, you just can't see it. So let's load it into uh, an, a new adjustment layer. And you, you'll see if I option click, this is what that looks like. We just loaded that luminosity selection into the mask of this adjustment layer. That looks pretty good. Let's click on that adjustment layer. And let's just make some some changes here. So let's pull down those mid-tone or the mid-tone slider. We're definitely having an effect on those mid-tones. That looks pretty good. Let's bring up those highlights some. Yeah, that looks good. And again, I don't mind uh, this going too far because I know I can mask it out of like the sky up here and that's fine. I really just want to bring out the emphasis on the hills and especially that tree. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. It looks pretty good. I think I can go a little bit further. And maybe even bring in some of these shadow tones as well. Yeah, it looks good. Let's preview that on and off. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, again, I'll, I'll go in and control the areas where I feel like it's going too far in the shadows and the highlights. But overall, I really like what, what that did in the central part of this image. So now let's go in and let's control uh, those, those tones. So I'm gonna control the shadows first this time. So let's go in with a, maybe a darks four. Now I'll go in with a, a darks three, that's fine. We'll load that up, get rid of those alpha channels, hide the marching ants, and let's go in and recover some of these shadow tones. And even here on this hillside, it might be a little bit dark. So let me make one 
one little pass there. And maybe one little pass up here as well. And one more right there. That looks good. All right, let me deselect. Have a look. Looks pretty good. And let's go in with the lights. I'll load uh, lights two. And then I'll remove it from those highlights. So now you can see this is just affecting mainly the center of the image. And I like that. That looks good. So let me deselect and reset my histogram information. And this is looking pretty good. Uh, let me go back down and let's option click and see where we started and where we're at now. Quite a big difference. Definitely. So I like the direction we're going. This is still kind of rough draft mode for me. Uh, there's more I want to do, but uh, I think this is good for this episode. I will continue to fine tune some of these tonality adjustments and also move on to some color adjustments, I think, in the next episode. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the episode. And remember to like the video and subscribe if you want to see future videos in the series or other series on my channel. And I'll see you in the next one.